Welcome to Stellaris, where the galaxy is dark but full of wonders. Today's video is very much a primer on the basics of the UI as well as your initial system. In total, we are not even going to be unpausing the game and do any gameplay related stuff. Please be aware of that. This is a pure primer on how the UI works as well as a basic overview of the economic systems and the do's and do nots when it comes to those. If you want to have something a little bit more in depth, feel free to check out the link in the description below or the little tag that pops up on the top right here, which will link you to a upcoming video or it is already released, but depending on your timeline about some more in depth stuff when it comes to space building stuff and exploration. In the meantime, we're going to go through the basics here and, and we are playing with the vanilla version. That means that we have no expansions, no DLC, no packs of any kind. This is the bare bones game that you can pick up pretty much anywhere on sale at any time of course considering you are already watching this video i will assume that you will have the game already for your details uh we are playing on the 2.7 build of the game it's a build that came out in may of 2020 and there's quite a lot of stuff here that we need to go over because if and even if you've come from the 2.0 time or the 2.2 time well the game has changed quite significantly since that era and of course if you've come in from say total war or you have in fact graduated from the civilization academy and want to something deeper to bite your teeth into well you've come to the right place let's go and uh, jump into a new game the ui that you see in front of you right now uh don't worry it's because of ui scaling that i've got turned on i have no idea how to turn it off i've played for over two and a half thousand hours of this game and uh let's put it this way i can't turn it off for some reason i'm not entirely sure what's going on there so for the sake of this one we are not going to create a new empire also the a lot of these empires you see right here are all custom made by me over the years instead we are going to scroll down at least in your case there won't be a scroll bar but there will be in mine and we are going to select a default empire specifically the united nations of Earth. This is a very nice starter empire to, you know, start off in, and basically it will show you the ropes that you will need to learn for your Solaris career. We're going to go ahead and select this. This is not important. We will discuss all this stuff in a different video. Yes, there are multiple videos coming up because Solaris is a labyrinthian and... Well, there is quite a lot of stuff to cover, and I do want to keep this into relatively bite-sized content for you to enjoy. And by bite-sized, probably around 30 minutes or something like that. Let's hit that play button, let's dive right in, and let's see what the world of Solaris has in store for us. It is quite a lot. Don't be too afraid, because the UI can be a little bit scary. Now, at the start of the game, you will find yourselves with this little text blurb. If you are a role player, this is a good time to orientate yourself about your setting, what you can do, and what you should be doing. However, if you are a min-maxer like myself, then this is also a good time to take a look at what kind of traits your species has, or what kind of civics you are running, and more and most importantly, what the ethics of your empire is. Uh, right now, we are running with Fanatic Egalitarian, which gives us certain bonuses, as well as Xenophile, which once again gives us certain bonuses. Once we get to the video regarding species modifications, as well as building your own species, this will make more sense. For those role players out there, the Prosperous Unification Origin and all the details below are all you need to set your sights on a glorious roleplay campaign. Let's begin! Now, first of all, it may not seem all that daunting. This UI seems relatively clear, and, uh, clean, and in all honesty, it's it's relatively straightforward, I would say. Sure, there's a bunch of items here that may not be all that clear, but that's why we are here today. Of course, you can always turn on the in-game tutorial as well, so yeah. That's something that you can do in order to make your life a little bit easier. Do be aware that the tutorial may be out of date depending on what version you are playing. So, 
the UI. First of all, the top of the top bar that we are presented with. It is where all of our empire resources are. All of our empire's abilities, what kind of stuff we can do, and the resources that we have in order to do of those things. And these are, of course, subdivided in several categories. These are the base tier and the advanced tier. The base tier is subdivided in energy, minerals, as well as food. These are the base materials that you can use to build out your empires. Energy is used to buy resources of any other type on the galactic market. We will dive into that shortly. Minerals are used for anything when it comes to planetary development, as well as building anything in space that is not space stations and ships. Megastructures is something different, and those are expansion only. Please be aware of that. Then there is the mid-tier, consumer goods, as well as alloys. Uh, consumer goods are generated through minerals as well as alloys, and you may have already guessed based on that one that minerals are very important in the game. You can never have enough minerals. Same goes for alloys. Alloys are used to build your fleets. Uh, as of 2.6, uh, alloys in and fleets were basically one of the only ways to play the game however as soon as that expansion came out on federation uh, soft power was introduced which means that diplomatic stuff as well as economic builds uh, are more important in the game now so if you're coming back to the game after a long time you will find yourself in a situation that you can throw yourself around in the quote-unquote galactic un we will have a separate video about that to enforce what you want without actually sending your fleets into space but in the end a big gun is pretty much all you need to enforce your uh, ideology uh, in the grand scheme of things the soft power is a nice addition and the only way that you can get that big stick is by having alloys once again you can never have enough alloys then we get to influence influence is basically our political power it's all internal uh, except except for one very specific example which is favors and we will get to the galactic community uh, tutorial separately once that is uh, you know a thing in this particular playthrough but influence is used to expand our territory enact special edicts within our empire that run over a long period of time as well as several other things that uh, basically require influence uh, this can range from anything from policy to yeah anything that involves diplomatic stuff and you gain these points basically by default uh, plus three in the standard version of the game and you can get more over time by getting factions but we'll get to factions again in a separate video we're not talking about factions today that is a completely separate discussion because we want to keep things relatively snappy then there is unity unity is the is the solaris equivalent of the culture uh, mechanic within civilization that's probably the best thing that I could, um, you know, uh, compare it to. Even if we go to its menu by uh, left-clicking on the actual Unity icon, we even have these traditions that are very similar to, say, Civilization 5 or Civilization 4 with all these trees. Now, we can fill all these out over time, and every single time that we've gotten one of these, then we can get access to a Ascension perk, which gives us additional bonuses. And every single one of these has different sub-bonuses that will be applied to us. Um, the trees themselves can be incredibly powerful and making your first decision on which tree uh, you should go for is definitely important but once again this is a general overview video so we won't go too much into traditions if you have ancient relics this is where you store your relics the system itself comes free with the game and there are more than enough mods on the workshop that allow you to use this system uh, in a in a good way because there is so many good workshop mods out there for you to enjoy science it's subdivided in three versions physics society and engineering every single one of them will give your empire bonuses or access to new weapons ships or buildings maybe also some additional stuff but once again we'll go into that later then we have strategic resources once again to give the analogy of civilization these are your horses these is, are your marbles your iron your oil your uranium special resources that give you bonuses and allow you to build special things in this particular case we have volatile moats exotic gases and rare crystals as the basic ones living metal zro 
Dark Matter and Nanites are special ones that are only really usable in the late game, and we won't be touching really upon those today. However, volatile modes for your notes are used for building more alloys. They are give you access to building upgrades towards the alloy plant. Exotic gases are completely focused on science and rare crystals on consumer goods. And that means that uh, it is realized I didn't really touch upon consumer goods. Consumer goods are the wonders of TV microwaves, etc. This is the gateway item to all your advanced resources. Uh, most unity and science are being generated from consumer goods and your population will also um, use a certain amount of consumer goods over time and they will generate, as I mentioned, the unity and the science, etc. Then we have uh, the Empire Sprawl. Empire Sprawl is not really all that important. Just to um, illustrate what it does, as your empire grows, you will need more administrative capacity in order to deal with the bureaucracy. Yes, this game has bureaucrats inside of it. In fact, you can have entire planets filled with bureaucrats just to make sure that your empire sprawl, sprawl does not massively affect your stuff. Uh, basically, this is a soft cap. That means that you can go over it at any time. But do be aware that if you go over it, a certain malice bonus will be applied to your colonies, your technology, Technologies, your traditions, your edict cost and campaigns. The higher you go over this number as it is right now, 50, it can easily go up to a thousand depending on how you set up your worlds. Uh, the more you have, the bigger of a malice you will receive and you will need to um, set up your economy in such a way to uh, counteract this. But yeah, uh, Empire Sprawl is, is rel relatively important, but overall you can in general, pretty pretty much ignored. Envoys are galactic community related as well as alien species related. We're not going to touch upon that in this video. All I have to say is that the more of them you have, the better it is. Especially for soft power. Envoys are pretty much the... Uh, embodiment of soft power within the game. Population, incredibly important. Pops are life. The more pops you have, the bigger economy you can have, the bigger fleet you can have, the more stuff you can do. I cannot stress this enough. Population is life. Always strive to get more pops as than possible. Then we have starbase capacity. Uh, we won't really touch too, mu too much on building starbases in this particular video. Um, they are basically special outposts that you build in space that you can set up to get trade value, for instance. Another item that is not listed on here, even though it is really important. Uh, trade value, building uh, starbases with fleet yards, with trading stations, with defensive stations, etc., etc., etc. And those are all possible. And and finally, on the top bar here, aside from this thing, uh, is the naval capacity. And the naval capacity, once again, as well as uh, the uh, Empire Sprawl and the Starbase capacity, is a soft cap up on how many ships we can have. Um, every single ship has a certain value, a base value. Let's say we have a Corvette. A Corvette has a base value of 1. A Destroyer has a base value of 2. A Cruiser has a base value of for a battleship, a base value of eight. And of course, it goes up from there onwards. Uh, the naval capacity, the more naval capacity you have, the bigger fleet you can do without it impacting your economy. So if you go over this number right here, which is currently set to 20, it will start negatively impacting your economy. So be aware of that. And over time, you can increase your naval capacity as you expand your empire. The bigger your empire, the more fleets you can field. Kind of similar in a about the whole pop thing because the more pops means you can get more resources which means you can get more fleet the systems kind of interact like uh, like that with each other uh, then we have the left bar. This is where all of our separate menus are hidden. Now, what is important here is, is that all of these menus may seem a little bit innocuous at first, but they can get very, very labyrinthian in their design. And please do pay attention because they can get a little bit 
convoluted. Let's put it that way. Let's go over number one, the the contact screen. We can also go through the hotkey number F1 in order to get here. And this is basically where every single empire that we have uh, discovered in space or every single entity we have discovered in space. There are not just aliens out there. There is more things that hide amongst the stars because, well, it is the it is, it is a galaxy filled with wonders. And uh, yeah, we can just go here and say, hey, uh, other empire of Blork or Blork, we want to communicate with you and then you just hit the communicate button and do trading or do pacts and uh, treaties and stuff like that and that is all handled on this screen um then we have the wonders of the situation log situation log basically has a list of special projects that you can do right now we have consumer good production based on our leader our leader has a Especially when you're running a democracy, which we are running right now. There are three other ones, and we will go about those uh, in the video about empire creation. Uh, consumer goods, in this particular case, is what our leader wants us to build. So we need to generate at least six consumer goods a month. Now, we are currently generating seven, so already good. So by the end of the term, we will get a amount of unity, which we can then spend on trade. Conditions. So yeah, that's something that right there is rather important. And let's take the opportunity to actually take a look at our leader uh, by pressing the government button on the top left of the screen. Our leader has a little bit of fluff. This is the window they look out on every single day. It's kind of like uh, the Lannisters overlooking King's Landing, not doing anything, because that is pretty much where they're going to be hanging out all the time. They have a level. The higher the level they have, the more efficient they are. But they also have a bunch of traits which are very important for our purposes. One of the first things you want to do in the game is actually take a look at what kind of traits your rulers have. In this particular case, they are an explorer and a industrialist. An industrialist means that we will get more minerals a month. In this particular case, we will get three additional minerals because we are now generating 30 minerals in total. And of course, minerals are life, which is good because it means that we can construct more stations, build more districts, yes, districts, to generate the resources that we need. Explorer, it be, means that we have a reduction in ship, uh, science ship cost, which is nice. And of course, uh, anomalies are being researched faster. But we will keep this particular part of the video uh, for a later date, most likely tomorrow. Or if you are watching this at some time in the future, at the end of the video, because there will be a big box that will link you to the follow-up video that will go into more details there. Uh, ethics and civics, we already touched upon that. We will dive into that later as a separate item uh there where are we the market the market is a very very special but also a very important screen remember how i was talking about energy and that we can use that to buy any resource in the game yes we can do that here now energy by itself is not tradable uh well you say that uh in some cases uh, that may be the case. There was a bug in the past that allowed you to trade it, but that is no longer the case anymore. Anyway, we can use energy to buy any material that we want, as long as, of course, we have enough money for it. So, for instance, right now, we could buy a bunch of minerals if we had the energy for it, but we don't. We do have minerals available, and we could sell it for a certain amount we would get 70 energy for that and that applies to all of our resources uh, at the start of the game it's usually a good idea to actually sell off your food and your uh, consumer goods especially if you play as a as a standard type of empire because it gives you the energy you need in order to get your first uh, second well your second sign ship up let's put it that way but we will go over that tomorrow in the first steps video this is just a general overview of the market and of course we can just click on any of the resources on the top to immediately go to the resource on the market that we need then there is the planets and sectors button this is a general overview of what your planets and sectors are producing sectors are basically a uh, area of space that are um, that is uh, regulated from a single planet and anything that is within five jumps of that planet, sometimes it's six, depending on what kind of patch you're playing on, um, it will be under that sector, and that sector will be controlled by a governor. In this particular case, it's Yolana Dudnik, who has a, a certain amount of bonuses that they can apply to it. But you can see here what kind of resources are being produced in this sector. Sometimes you can, uh, well, you can click on this, and sometimes you will need to apply a special bonus to a planet, and 
the the amount of planets that you sometimes have, it's it's a good idea to go to this screen first to see what planet would be a good place to apply these bonuses on. Let's say that you have a science bonus, then you want to go to the planet that has the biggest science output and then apply set bonus there. But this is more advanced stuff that applies to the later game. But the um, planets and sectors tab is very, very good for that. Uh, the shared stockpile stuff at the top. Don't use it. it. It's not that useful. It's it, To me, it's mostly fluff. It's sector related. It's not all that great. Then we have the expansion planner. The expansion planner will illustrate every single planet that you have found that is potentially habitable. Sometimes they are not habitable at all. And But also we will have a list of potential uh, terraforming candidates. Yes, terraforming is a thing in the game. And you can totally terraform Mars into a luscious a continental world similar to Earth somewhere down the line. But this is more mid-game technology and is not applicable to the start at all. All. And uh, down, there, down this list you will find a uh, series of planets and then you can select uh, the planet that you want to colonize based on its traits as well as its districts and its modifiers as well as its features. But we will talk about that uh, very shortly when we look at the planetary tab. Then we have the policy window. This is a whole video on its own to say the least. Uh, these are the policies of our empire. How do we how do we look out at the galaxy at large? How do we look inward towards our own empire? Um, do we do indiscriminate bombardment on enemy planets? Are we allowed to resettle our pops to different worlds without their consent? Uh, how is our border initially opened? Is it not? Is it closed? How does it, what does our economy look like? How is our trade value spent? This is probably the most important tab in this entire thing. Um, there is a separate video about trade value coming into our general direction. Uh, whether or not our population can be controlled or not. Uh, whether or not they are allowed to breed, etc. Do we allow for slavery? Are we allowed to purge? And this is... Uh, all of these options are available to you depending on the ethics that you picked at the start of the game or that you have slowly but steadily flipped to throughout. But we will talk about that during the factions video. Edicts. Edicts are permanent bonuses that are applied to your empire. Uh, right now, our empire has a soft cap of one edict. That means that we can apply only one of these bonuses to our empire. We only have uh, the ability to use two at the moment. But as we unlock traditions and technologies, we will get access to more edicts over time. Once you're in the game, feel free to give it a read through on what exactly they do. And I will give you an example right now. Fortify the border is something that we can afford, but we don't need to use it because it basically says you get more star bases we don't really need more star bases right now because we first of all don't have any places to put them but also we don't have the resources to um, actually um, build them but we also don't have the space to put them anywhere so yeah feel free to have a read through all of those and see what you can find then we have the traditions and relics screen we already touched upon this the ship designer if you are somebody who just came into Stellaris and were like I saw awesome stuff with spaceships blowing up left right and center and lasers flying everywhere and I'm gonna spend so much time on this screen perfecting my perfect ship. Well, I sadly have some bad news for you. You will not be spending all that much time on this screen because whilst warfare is important in the late game and in very specific cases in the early game, you will not really need to spend all that much time here. I am sorry to break the news to you right here, right now. Um, sure, we can just go ahead and make our ships fancy and stuff like that by adding more stuff, but... Um, Hey, you're not going to be spending a lot of time here unless we're in the mid game. Let's put it that way. Uh, the fleet manager uh, is a screen where we manage our fleets, as the name so interestingly implies. Uh, basically, at the start of the game, we have one fleet over here, which is so nicely named the first fleet. And it shows how many ships we have there. And we can just add ships here. And if you hit the control shift key together, we hit the plus button. It will automatically fill up the fleet. It will show how much firepower this fleet can have, how much firepower there is right now, the cost to reinforce this entire fleet, is, which is money we don't have, or have, um, well, you know, the ability to spend because we need those 100 alloys for more important things. So don't, don't click this reinforce button at the start of the game. Really important. You need the alloys. 
Um, yeah, yeah, that's we're going to talk about this uh, screen separately in the ship design video. Technology, extremely important, and oh my god, did I roll some great scientists at the start of the game. As I said, they are already subdivided in physics, society, and engineering. Now, every single one of these is important because, well, let's put it this way. If we go ahead and select our research, we get a bunch of options. And those options are subdivided uh, by uh, cost, really. The cost you see over here, which is the base cost and how much time it would take to research this. The base cost right now is 2000 which would take us 90 a month to research. However, we already know what we can do and what we cannot do and the type of infrastructure that we have right now we don't really have any research stations so we can ignore this for now uh research uh physics research plus 20 percent from our researchers is a very very big deal however because it is so important to get knock-on effects through percentages in this game we're going to go ahead and go for administrative ai for additional research speed across the board very important to go for research speed research is king technology is king together with pops and alloys then we can go quickly over here uh we can get planetary unification right at the get-go because uh we are planetary unified uh this is a default option for this particular origin type we will go into origins a little bit deeper uh at the um empire creation uh, video, but uh, we're gonna go for biodiversity and in this particular case we have the option to go for nanomechanics as well as powered exoskeletons now nanomechanics by themselves may seem to be very very important because it does give it that it gives us that research engineering bonus However, we're gonna go for powered exoskeletons instead because it is the road to robots and robots are wonderful absolutely wonderful but we'll go a little bit deeper into that once we get to the planetary side. Uh, factions, don't need to really talk about that right now. They're not really all that important at the start of the game. So we'll leave that for a separate video. Uh, claims, we don't really know anything. Uh, we only have the uh, information over one system at the moment, which is the soul system. So this is not applicable. Our species, we already talked about this at the start of the video. What are the traits of our species? And this is also the screen where you can completely genetically modify your species to your heart hearts content and if you own utopia you can add all sorts of fun stuff to that any other species that join your empire can of course be done as well and if we go into our right screen which is up to the right here uh we can also set the citizen style citizenship level of our species what kind of living standards they have uh military service and all of these other wonderful things that are available to our species we will go into the uh, empire setup video to talk deeper on that please be aware that if you do and uh, do own utopia you will have a way 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 more rights available to your species please be aware and then finally we have our leaders uh the governors as i mentioned govern over a area of space any planet that is within that area will automatically be added to a sector that is controlled by a governor our scientists they uh do science stuff as well as going out there into the wild yonder. We will talk about science in a separate video. Admirals, they are on your fleets and they will fly around and be uh, badasses and are probably some of the more important characters in your game aside from uh, governors and scientists. And generals, who we will completely forget about because generals um, are terrible and we don't need to use them. Um, ground combat in Solaris. If you were expecting anything like pitched battles from Total War, yeah, no, that's that's not not going to be a thing at all here. Then finally at the bottom of the screen, oh, this one is kind of important as well. There's the navigation bar lock button. It's super tiny and it really shouldn't be because of how important it is. If we click this here, um, what will happen is it will pop out and it's super annoying. But if you are a new player and you don't know what all these things are and you want to know what they are without having to individually click while all of these, uh, you can just go and hover over and then see what they uh, what they are and just uh, click on them. And if you are already familiar with the interface, all you have to do is uh, hit the lock button and it will all be fine. It's basically a handheld tool for those of you who are a little bit more familiar 
with the game. Then we have our hotkeys at the bottom, or at least uh, the sh the ships and items that are currently hotkeyed. Number one, our planet. Number two, our first fleet. Number three, a science ship, and number four, a construction ship. And you can add anything to this toolbar. You can even replace these if you want. Then at the bottom, we have the current paused, uh, yeah, button right here. It's not really a button. It's just an indicator saying that the game is in fact paused, and the close galaxy map button and this is the name of our solar system down here as well as the ability to open up this screen again this button is on this screen f twice for some reason not entirely sure why that is the case uh sometimes when you get into uh others other alien systems uh, the button will be changed by uh, to whatever they are and they will go immediately to the contact window but you can also use this here to change your name so we can change this to something whatever we want and of course there is the galaxy map down here that we can click and close or hit M and close. Then there's all this stuff at the bottom. You don't need to be worried about this. There's only one item that is important here and uh, we will talk about that at the end of the video. And then finally we have the outliner. Now the outliner is a generalized overview of your empire. Uh, what is in this empire? The planets, the sectors, the civilian ships, the military fleets and shipyards. Now you may think by yourself, you know what? This is not all that much. It's uh, it's easy to see what's going on. Well, when I hit this little cock button here, um, you will see that there's all of these things that can be listed in this here list. Or, of course, you can always prioritize things by moving them up and down in the list or which ones you want to uh, show. Like, for instance, I only want to see planets or I only want to see sectors. You can always also turn both off so you don't have planets here at all i do highly recommend that at least planets are enabled for your convenience of course you can also go and uh, turn off planets and turn on sectors only because it allows for a, a cleaner uh, little thing here but yeah there's a whole bunch of stuff here that um uh, that can be uh, that can be looked at throughout the game. I do highly recommend that if you are new to go to the workshop and download the tiny outliner mod because it makes this a lot more compact and allows you to uh, navigate things a lot easier. But yeah, this is where you can select things very quickly on your first fleet, your uh, science ships, construction ships, your shipyards, etc. So. I did, I did promise that we were going to take a quick look at our economy system. The economy system in Stellaris, well, used to be a lot simpler than it is today. And if you are new to the game, you don't need to worry about that. But if you're coming back from before 2.0 came out, you will be in a world of surprise. Because if we go into our outliner and we click on Earth you will find that this interface is brand new. And this is the basic economy. And why am I going over this in this particular video, in the generalized overview of the game? And it's very, very simple. The economy of the game is the core of the game. If you don't have a good economy, you are not going to go anywhere anytime soon. Now, we're not going to go into full detail about the economy in general. No, we are not. We will leave that for the video for tomorrow when we unpause for the first time. Yes, we are 32 minutes into the video and we still haven't unpaused the game. And that's right. But I still want to go over things a little bit in a overview kind of way when it comes to our economy. Our economy is set up through population. Now, this is the first screen you see, but in order to properly illustrate on what our economy looks like, we need to go to our population tab because our population is divided into three strata. Strata are basically the tiers of the population. You have your leaders, you've got your specialists, and you've got the worker rabble. You also will have robots, which will go into workers or specialists or rulers, depending on how advanced they are. But we will go into that later once we go once we dive deep into the economy system itself. What is very important here, though, and I cannot stress this enough is that workers will always try to become specialists. If there is a specialist job available, workers will flock en masse to get into that job, leaving their own jobs behind, which means that the output of the workers will reduce because those pops, which you can grow, will then all of a sudden be specialists. How does this, this work? Well, right now, for instance, we have 35 energy income, as you can see here on the top 
left. Those income, uh, that income is coming from our technicians. Now our technicians, as soon as they see a alloy metallurgist uh, job popping up in the specialist area, they will try to move in there, leaving one of these jobs empty. Most likely two, because these buildings cost uh, two pops to operate which means that we will have less income. For instance, this pop right here, as the uh, little tooltip tells us, will generate five energy. And that's nice. However, if two of these pops move away, that means that we lose 10 energy on income. Now, why is this important? Well, if we go back to our planet summary, we will see that we have districts. The districts are where the workers work. I think that's relatively straightforward. We got our energy districts, our mining districts, our agricultural districts, and finally the city districts for housing because people will need to live somewhere. They also generate clerks and trade value and amenities. We will go over that shortly. However, the specialists work in the buildings, except for the planetary administration. That's where the leaders work, as well as one very special building over here, which is the commercial zone, which has clerks in it, which is a worker job. So let's say, for instance, if I had the money, I would build that alloy foundry and immediately uh, Pops will try to move from here to there, trying to filling up those jobs. And that right there is something we want to avoid. So Observe, these two, these two indications right here are objectively some of the most important ones in the game. There are many, many, many numbers around here that may seem very complex and convoluted. Ignore them for this video, we're only going to focus on the unemployment and the jobs that are available. You always want to try to make sure that these are balanced, extremely important. Unemployment is bad, but having too many jobs available is also bad. Why is it bad? Well, it means that some, in some cases, let's say that we've built several buildings on these tiles, but we don't have the population to support them. That means that pops will move from the districts to the building slots and try the work there, draining our economy of important resources. Therefore, if you have unemployed pops, it's usually a good idea to then build your district or your specialist building because once that building is done, pops will start filling up those slots and those unemployed pops will start filling up the remaining slots. Very important. Just because you see a big plus here saying it's an open building slot does not mean that you should build a building. Same thing with districts. Just because you can build a district doesn't mean that you should build a district. And that right there is the basic principle behind the Stellaris economy, as well as a generalized overview of the game itself. Tomorrow, we are going to do something extremely exciting. We are going to hit the unpause button. That's right. We are going to start playing. This has been a generalized overview of Stellaris completely for beginners. For those of you who sat out all the way through the video, I want to thank you and also welcome you into the world of Stellaris. Get ready for a ride because this game, whilst it may be four years old by now, is still actively being worked on by the developers and there is most likely four more years of development coming into our general direction. For those of you who are my patrons, thank you so much for making this video series possible. For those of you who are new here as well, subscribing is always nice because tomorrow there is a new video out because we're going to go out there and build our first thing. Thank you so much for watching and Feel free to click on one of these here videos that are at the end of the video because, well, those are the links that will get you to where you want to go to learn more about Stellaris. If you are new, well, there's a tutorial video right here about me unpausing. And for those of you who are a little bit more in-depth but wanted to polish up on your Stellaris skills, well, there's the Stellaris Mechanics playlist. So feel free to go and check that out, those out because there are many, many mechanics in this game that you can take a gander at. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, take good care of yourselves. And as always, welcome to a galaxy that is dark and full of wonders.